Hello, hi, uh, I'm Grace and I'm a set and costume designer and today I thought me and you could do some drawing together. Um, I really love drawing. I draw when I'm happy or I draw when I'm sad, um, but most of all I draw when I'm bored. Um, and I have a feeling that quite a lot of us are bored at the moment. Um, I thought that we could start by drawing people because I think people are the most interesting things to draw. Um, plus, there's so many references that you can pull from. You can draw characters from your favourite books, you can redraw cartoon characters however you want to, you can draw the people you're locked down with, you can draw your family, whoever you want you can draw. Um, and obviously most of all you can draw yourself. So let's start off with the basic proportions of how to draw a human body. Now I know that sounds daunting, but I promise you once you know them, they're really easy. So first of all, we're gonna start off, yeah, with the human figure. So hopefully you can see this with my nifty up here camera, but um, if not, then just listen to what I'm saying and we will work it out. So, uh, we're going to start off by drawing a straight line down the page. Now, you can use a ruler if you like. Personally, I prefer going freehand. So, I'm going to start off in the one side and I'm going to draw a top of the line and a bottom of the line. And then I'm going to draw a straight line down in between them. It doesn't have to be too straight, just as long as it's nice and horizontal. Uh, no, nice and vertical. So, everybody roughly is about eight heads tall. That means that my head fits into my body about eight times. So once we've got this line, it's really easy to break that up into eight. First of all, roughly put where you think the halfway line is, and then roughly put where you think that halfway line is between the top and the halfway, and the same with the bottom. Now you've got four sections. So you wanna half that again, each of those in half, and now we have eight sections. So we know that whoever this is that I'm about to draw, their head is gonna be about this big. Now, as you can see there, I like to draw over and over my lines quite a lot. That's a very messy way of doing it. But the good thing about drawing is there's actually no wrong answers, because you can just pretend that you meant for it to look like that. So the next proportion that we need to know is our belly button and Believe it or not, your belly button will be about the third point down. So maybe it's worth us numbering this. Maybe if we make the top point zero, the next one one, the next one two, then three, four, five, six, seven, and eight on the floor. So number three is a belly button. Again, these change a lot depending on human to human, but this is just a rough guide just to get you going and to get over looking at a big empty page and feeling a bit scared of it. So roughly sort of in between the, those uh, one and two, maybe slightly nearer one, that's a vague line for our shoulders. It's that simple. What I like to do next is to start drawing circles where I know that any joints are. So any bits that are bending on your, on your body, I like to just draw a circle because generally any bendy bits will be a circle because they have to have uh, a nice rotary movement. I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but I'm going with it. So I'm gonna draw a circle here and it doesn't matter if we're going over where our numbers are. And then you can start to see that they're taking form. The other important one to know is the top of the leg or your crotch is around number four. So we know that that's where our leg top is going to be. So I'm going to do another circle here and another circle here. You don't have to be precious about this. Number six is going to be the bottom of the knee. So I like to extend that line out. We're going to do a very boring pose for this first person. So the bottom of the knee, number six. And of course, number eight, if we draw that out, that's where our heel is going to be, the heel of our foot. So now I'm looking at it, I think that maybe, I don't know what you think, old camera in the sky, but that this knee is slightly further out than I want it to be, because really your leg is a pretty straight line down. So yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub that out. And if you have a pen, I would just start off by drawing very softly. 
for your first figure and just redrawing over the bits that don't that aren't quite right just drawing them where you want them to be and remember there is no such thing as quite right anyway so what am i talking about so now i'm going to start drawing up and connecting the edges of those circles for the legs you see how he's getting fleshed out uh, let's do arms next so point three as well as being your belly button is also where roughly your elbows are if your arms are straight and point five is roughly where the very edge of very tips of your fingertips should be so you want to go slightly higher than that feel free by the way to pause the video at any point if you want to get a better look at any of this so we're going to continue doing our hands. Hands are very difficult to draw. I find them almost impossible, but you can sort of rough them in by doing a bit of a U shape for that part of your hand and then a thumb. If that makes sense. And so then again, I'm going to, like I did with the legs, I'm going to go from the center of the shoulder to the elbow to where I put this hand. Center of the shoulder, elbow, hand. And there you can see, really taking shape now. So uh, let's join up those hands. So the wrist is normally a bit thinner and we want to do a bit of a curve. Now there's a lot of schools of thought about whether to do curves or straight lines when you're drawing. Um, it used to be considered that if you did straight lines, it was more likely to be a masculine figure or a man. And if you did curvy lines it was more likely to be a feminine figure now however i think the most interesting drawings that you will do will have a mixture of both curvy and straight lines and that really it depends on what kind of character you're trying to portray so now we're here so let's go from let's start roughing in our neck now if you look at my neck you can see it's almost at the edge of my jawbone but not quite it's just slightly in from there we're going to do more close-ups of faces shortly, but for now, you just want to follow in. And the other nice thing to do here is to get a bit of a curve on it because, I mean, really, it's a bad time to write out on it. You can see that all notes have a slight curve out. No one's got a dead straight cartoon neck unless you want them to, because again, there are no right answers. So, I'm going to do that like that. And now I want you to think more about your skeleton. We've got all of these lines roughed in and roughly our body's proportions. But if you picture a skeleton, um, picture the rib cage, you'll remember that it's, it's sort of slightly bowed, isn't it? So when I'm drawing in the chest, I like to just do a slight curve of the rib cage, like so. Maybe if I'm really showing you where the rib cage is, do a little curve up like that. And then you can start imagining the skin going over it, being aware of where our belly button is. And there you go, that's sort of a human body. And of course this changes hugely on who you're drawing, but in terms of proportions, these are a really good starting place. Back down to the legs now. This is because I'm putting off drawing feet. Feet and hands are just not fun, I promise you. But they can be easier. So I'm going to draw in another ball, which is going to be the calf of the leg, the nice fleshy bit at the top underneath the knee. And then I'm going to just picture that being a big ball on the back of the leg and start to just let my lines pick that out and go down to where I've drawn that ball on the bottom. I hope this makes sense, gang. And again, it's in terms of how athletic the body is, you might want to do straighter lines here. If it's someone that's really speedy, then they're probably gonna have a bigger calf muscle because they're running loads. Um, if it's someone who mainly sits down and eats snacks like me, then it's gonna be someone with a bit more um, of a circle there. And then for your feet, we're just going to draw two more balls where the balls of the feet go. Okay, and there we go. That's our basic human body. So now what's exciting is we can apply that to other beings and other figures and other poses. Okay, so I've printed out a nice figure here that I'm going to be drawing from. You can pick whichever figure you want or you can draw this one with me. 
but this is who we're going to be drawing. Um, what I like about this pose is that there's a bit of weight shifting. We can see that her body's not completely straight. Um, and also there's a night, it's very flat, which is really useful for our perspective. By flat, I don't mean her. I mean that she's proportionally laid out for it. She's not kind of leaning away from the camera or leaning towards the camera. We can get a nice even proportion on her like we did in that first drawing. So that's a really useful place to start. So because we are all beginners here, I'm going to start by drawing on the body. Obviously, you shouldn't probably do this later on because the dream here is that one day you'll be drawing people in person instead of from photographs. But as we're starting out, we're going to look at this and see how we can apply these proportions to this body. So I'm going to start off this time. I am going to use a ruler, but you don't have to. And I'm going to draw a line down the middle. And then I'm going to sort of see where my eight lines up. So you can see that there's the middle is about there. Again, number four. And then half again is about there. So that's where number two is. Half again here. Number six, that's the below the knee one, if you remember. And at the bottom, we've got eight and zero. So now I can see that halfway between two and zero, I proof that I'm not lying to you, that's how big the head is. Halfway between two and four, that's where her belly button's gonna be. Between four and six, that's where her fingertips would be if her arms were straight down. Six and eight. Poor number seven doesn't really have much going on. So, now we can see that I might even start drawing some circles directly onto this body just to get a sense of what these circles are. So we can see our elbows, which should be at three, but because we're doing a more interesting pose, they're up here. Our head, of course, filling that lovely gap between zero and one. And then I'm looking at this very straight line that we've drawn and I'm thinking, about where her body goes on either side. So this leg obviously is quite a bit further away from that central line than this leg is, but this hip is further away than this hip is. So that lets me know that she's sort of making an S shape. One really good trick when you're drawing poses is to try and copy the pose that you're drawing and feel where the weight is. So if I've got my hands over my head and she's sort of popping that hip out Sorry, I know this isn't very interesting watching, but she's popping that hip out, her foot's at a nice angle, and I'm feeling, I'm thinking, well, my knee feels like there's some weight on it, and my hip at number four feels like there's some weight on it, and my head feels like I'm tilting it slightly, so there's a bit of a stretch here and also in my neck. That means that I can work out where the pressure points are and try and get a sense of how much her body is moving away from that being completely straight pose that we just drew. Time to start drawing. So I'm going to do a bottom pose, bottom head, bottom of the line, top of the line, and draw, join them up. Again, I'm keeping this line, well, meant to be straight because then that's going to help be my guide. I'm just going to check that. Yeah. So and again, I know it's a boring task, but we're going to do, I think that's a bit high. We're going to do one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, fantastic. So now we know we've got our full cheat sheet of where our body should be. So I think her head, when we did the pose, I think it's slightly leaning this way, isn't it? So I'm just going to slightly tilt the head that way. And again, feel free to pause at any time, see how far you get. Then I'm going to draw in her shoulders like I did last time, about halfway up, although I think hers might be slightly closer to her chin. So I'm going to do it proportionally between where that line is. It's about there. And there's another shoulder about there. Okay. Okay. What I'm doing now is I'm looking at the drawing and I'm really trying to picture like a projector 
this image onto what this line is. And it's really important that you stop and look at your drawing while you're drawing it regularly, because there's nothing worse than getting in there, doing loads of detail, and then taking a step back and realize that you've missed a whole leg. So now I'm gonna, <laughs> see, this is the scary part. I'm not exactly sure which bit to draw next, but I know that her body's tilted. Maybe we start thinking about her spine coming round and down. And, and her hips that are between three. Ah, so yeah, we can get her belly button in, can't we? That's useful. We know where that is, roughly. And then I'm gonna start looking at this line here and how her hips are going up more at one side than the other, around that four line. And I can see here that her Knee is just above the six. I should have numbered this. Let's do that quickly. One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a reason I can draw. So another circle about here, coming closer to the line again. Her foot is about here. You can really draw in these circles, however they come to you. Whatever's gonna be the biggest clues from your little guide. So this knee is further away. It's also slightly nearer the camera and you can see that by the fact that it's actually a bit lower than the line six and lower than that other knee. So I'm gonna rough that in about there. And remember, you can't possibly get this wrong because if you go off piece or if it doesn't look like the body perfectly, just tell people it's abstract. The most important thing is to create something and to get drawing. So I'm now putting in those lines. I think because this hip is higher, I'm starting further away on where I'm drawing that line. And I'm picturing her skeleton twisting with her rib cage and her hip going up. I'm feeling it in my own body. I'm imagining what that feels like. And that helps me massively to draw this in. Now she's got, I hope I'm not blocking that camera. She's got you can see her hip bone here, speaking of the skeleton, as she's turning away. So I think her hip bones are about here and here. And I don't really know what the shape of a hip bone is, but I can see that there's a bit of a circle there. So that's what I'm going for. Sorry that my cat has joined us. I hope that's okay. And then I'm going to do a bigger circle around that hip bone. You can see this drawing is incredibly messy. All of the lines are sort of blurring together. But that's fine. If I really love the drawing, I can trace over it or I can rub it out. And by rub it out, I mean rub out the messy lines. It's all just about allowing your hand to be free and creating something. And so I think because her thighs are quite overlapped, you can get a real sense of how her body's twisted. See, I know that I'm doing a lot of sketchy lines. Sometimes it is fun to just go for it with some nice, bold, clean lines and see what happens. Hmm. Armpits are really hard to draw. I'm sorry that I keep saying everything's hard to draw, but the point isn't that it's easy. The point is that it's fun and therapeutic and creative. Yeah, I think where I've gone wrong here is not looking at my chart. You can see that actually this line going down the middle, her leg goes on the inside of that line. So I'm again, I'm using that central line to really anchor this drawing and let me know where I'm going wrong. And I'm using my mark at five, the poor unloved mark at five, is finally getting a look in here because I can see that in fact the leg stays on that side all the way around five and then and then comes out to the knee like that just like that okay now let's go back up to these arms so two, the other thing about two is it is where your nipples would be. I hope that's not too crude to say. 
it's all just anatomy it's nothing to be embarrassed about so i know that her crop top or bra is going to be covering that area like so and i can see and again armpits are hard she's got a little bit of shading just there on the armpit and then her arm comes out there's a little little curve there see i'm just following the map that's here of her body out to where i think her elbows would be i forgot to do my ball joint then i'm going to do it over on this side i think it's about there because if you look it's sort of in line with her eyes and it's sort of as just a bit further out than her body so i think it is about there and she's got a nice point on the elbow there so i can draw that in follow this arm round and down and use that shoulder ball to come up and see this little line on the inside of her elbow and just defining again the weenus which is the bit of skin just on your elbow which you actually can't feel anything in so just drawing in those little marks on the map and then I'm looking at where her, the line between her elbow and her head, again, it's going to about her eye line or the top of her head. So I'm just going to draw that in like that. And again, I'm just looking at where, where her body goes in and out. And her neck, she again, a nice curve of her neck. You can just start to draw in some clothes. And remember, if you're drawing a figure, you can put them in whatever clothes you want. You can design your own clothes. You can get the clothes from a different reference altogether. I'm just putting in more of those clothes details where her legging is. So you can see that on this part of her, this side of her leg where, on this leg, where the legging ends is a straight line. And on this leg, we have a curve and that's to do with the perspective of her body. But it's little details like that that mean I'm giving the person who's looking at it more clues about what her body is doing. Let's go to Hannah, so she's got a hat on. So I might just take this opportunity to rub out what was behind the hat. And she's got curly hair that comes out. So I might even use a circle again to draw in where I think that hair goes. And then I'm looking at the texture of her hair and how it flicks about and has curly and straight bits. I'm not going to follow it too precisely. I'm not going to get every bump perfect. But I'm just going to try and copy as best I can the curly bits and the flicky bits and the lovely little ringlets. And, uh, and then I'm going to go and look at this face because her hair's coming over her face slightly, you see. So... I'm not going to draw the face just yet, but I might just allude to what the face would be by drawing a cross like that. More to come shortly. And her hair, I'm going to add some shading to. Now, shading is a very, very simple way of giving your drawings more layers, making them more dynamic, and it's really fun to do. So, I'm gonna go, I think, I think we're done. I'm gonna add a bit more shading to her armpit here to match this side. The fun thing about shading is you can build it up in layers and layers. So you can start out very lightly and then gradually you can keep 
cross hatching back and forth over the dark bits to make them darker. I'm going to keep picking up her hair because her hair is really fun to draw. Right, that's all the shading I'm going to do, otherwise we'll be here all day. And I, once again, as you've probably guessed, I've left the feet till last because feet are hard. So I've got the ball here, I'm drawing back over the image, and another circle there, and a ball here, and then that side the circle's crossing over. So not too far off, I don't think. Maybe I'll use the trainer scoop to help me get some perspective there. How's your drawing looking? Are you drawing along? It's relaxing, isn't it, drawing? Well, sometimes it is, sometimes it's very stressful. And I always like to do a big cartoony shoelace. And I'm drawing that by doing the two loops of a bow and two lines. And that's it. And I think that's her done. Okay, so now that we've got our body, let's start on our face. So obviously faces are all completely different, but there are some unifying features that keep a face sort of looking like a real human. So we're gonna start off with a nice circle. I'm pressing very lightly with my pencil there so that I don't have to commit to any single one of those lines. And then, I'm going to do a line down the centre and I'm going to come out the bottom of the circle for as much as I want my chin to be big. So about there. So I reckon that's probably about halfway. I'm going to use that circle. I'm going to roughly draw, use it to turn it into an oval. So now we have our oval, but there's a circle at the top that's ever so slightly bigger than our oval below. And it really doesn't matter what the proportions of these are, especially if you're drawing cartoony people. If you've ever seen Pixar, they often design their characters by drawing a random shape as the head and then filling in facial uh, features to try and make it look like a normal head. That's how they get those big goofy faces. But we're going to aim for realism at first. It's always the way. So I've drawn my line down and then about halfway down the face, I'm going to draw another line. This might also be the point that your circle connects to the oval, like so. So now that I can tell you is where your eyes are. They're actually halfway down your head. If you were to shave your head completely or if you don't have any hair, you can see that my eyes are about halfway down my head. So then between that line, I'm so sorry that there's so much halving between that line and the bottom of the chin we're going to do another line it might be where the bottom of that circle is and that's going to be where the bottom of your nose is and then between that line and the chin we're going to do another line so why don't we number off these lines again so we've got our top line which is always zero our center line which is one our nose line which is two and our mouth line which is three and then our chin at number four. And those really are the only lines you need to then work out a face. From here, you can rough in, as long as you've got your eyes on that line, your nose on that line, and your mouth on that line, it will always look like a proportional face. Generally, when we're drawing faces, we'll often start off with the eyes, because as we all know, the eyes are the windows to the That's going to be where the outside of your nose is, roughly. And if you draw a pupil in there. You can see these shapes aren't hard, they're not very even. I'm not, not worrying too much about getting this perfect. Drawing lines down again. That's going to be the corner of your mouth. I know, it's, it's magic and wizardry. So, I'm drawing those lines a little bit thicker just to make sure you can see them. Now, noses I find incredibly difficult to draw. So here's my top tip for drawing noses. I like to draw a curvy triangle like this and shade it a little bit. And that's gonna be the ice cream cone of the nose. And again, it all depends on who you're drawing. But now you can put in your nostrils. 
looking at who your reference is and seeing what their nostrils look like. But essentially, they're going to go either side of your little curvy triangle. Then you can draw a nostril around, hugging that little, little semicolon and up. And maybe you want to shade it a little bit more. And at the bottom of the triangle is where uh, the top of our cupid's bow is going to be. So I hope this makes sense. But that little triangle just meant that I wasn't quite so nervous going into that. Now I'm going to take some of the shading away and voila. Now going up from there, this person, generally if you draw, if you can see on my face, sorry that I keep using my face as a reference, but I don't have a, a thin line here defining where my nose is. What I have is shading on either side, which tells you where the bridge of my nose is and where the ball of my nose is. So what I would suggest that you don't do is ever draw a direct line going down like that because it's always going to make it look very cartoony unless you want it to look cartoony in which case go ahead you get a sort of homer simpson nose but what i'm going to do instead is where my outer line is there from the eyes i'm just going to shade a little bit going up and the same on the other side and remember all people are so different it's hard to do a sort of general proportions but here we are now if i go continue that line up the edge of our nose line, then I know that that's roughly where our eyebrows are going to start. So, eyebrows, again, they do so much, they show so much expression, you can't really just rough them in, but that is what we're going to do today. So, I like to take it up, like that, and then curve it back down, and the curving back down is roughly at the edge of the eyeball. See that? And you can really play with eyebrows and get as many different expressions as you want. I think this person's slightly annoyed about something from what I can tell. So that's like that. Okay, right, let's move on to mouth. So we know where our cupid's bow is at the top from here, and we know where our mouth line is and where it's gonna end. A great way of doing this is to just get the shape of the mouth. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a pretty straight mouth here, but I'm gonna go up slightly in the middle because I think that makes it look a bit more natural and relaxed. And that's the central line of my mouth. And now lips, I'm gonna copy where that cupid's bow is there, or where the, the bridge of my nose is there. The bridge of the nose is there. And I'm gonna come down like this. And I tend to not like drawing a full line under the bottom of the lip because if you look at most people's lips, their skin kind of and their lip here isn't as defined as it um, as it often is in cartoons. Sometimes all you see is a little bit of that central lip. So what I do is I mirror where the cupid's bow is underneath the lip and then I curve it up. I don't go all the way to the end. Now here I might like to just shade a little bit underneath that lip to get a sense of a, a nice chin. And now you can really feel that the, the image is running away from itself because I just want to keep drawing and drawing and defining those lines. Oh, and I didn't tell you my favourite proportion. We've drawn all of this and you're probably wondering now, but how big are ears? Well, ears are precisely between one and two. like so and there we have it so now i'm going to rub out some of those lines so we can see this person a little bit clearer remember you don't always have to rub out sometimes you can paint over sometimes you like might like to leave all of your working out there because it shows all of the hard work you've put into it but just for the purposes of today, to prove to you that I've done a very proportional face, I'm just going to rub out and see the face start to appear more and more prevalent. And brush that away. And there we go. Very generic, very simple face. So now we can add more shading in. 
So if you look, there's usually shadows under the eyes. You can play with how old the person is or how tired they are. Remember that expression is everything when drawing face. Just drawing in some eyelids now for fun. You might not want to. And uh, why don't we have a couple of eyelashes? One of my top tips for drawing eyelashes is eyelashes don't actually all go in the same direction and they're definitely not straight. So what I like to do is just flick and try and get my pen or pencil to move nice and quickly. And now we might want to do a couple of bottom eyelashes. Hmm. And you can draw some freckles on. You could shade in a little bit of blusher starting to look very cute now. I didn't mean this to be quite so sweet. And, um, and oh yeah, we've not even drawn any irises. So, um, so your eyes have got obviously the colour part around the edge and then the iris, black iris in the middle. But you'll notice in most people's drawings, if you look into my eyes right now, there's actually a huge amount of light from all of the different light sources that are being reflected into, into my eyes. So I like to just very faintly draw in the iris. And then you can do one of two things. You can either color it in and use your rubber to put the light back in, or you can take the light out completely. So I'm gonna say that with this face, the light source is somewhere around here, out front. So I'm not gonna draw any shading in that part or that part of the eye. And I'm also not going to do anything in that, in the centre of the eye as well, to try and get even more life into these eyes. So now I can colour in the middle circle black, or darker, and then the outer circle I'm just going to lightly shade, like so. And voila, you can then draw hair onto them. You could maybe go back over your first drawings and draw across in a central line and start roughing in where those eyes and nose and mouth can be. See how quickly I'm just sort of roughing in shapes. You don't have to be precise. You can just let your pencil do all the work for you. Just follow it along and have fun with it. And yeah, I think that's it for today. What I would say to you is to just get drawing. Um, get drawing and see what, what features you like and what's fun to draw and what's not fun to draw. Um, and yeah, I would like to challenge you now to um, think of your favourite book or your favourite TV character and see if you can draw them or see if you can redraw them. Think about what colours the clothes that they're wearing are. Think about whether that's fun to play into or to play against. Yeah. Thank you so much for following along with me. I hope this has been interesting. I've really enjoyed doing some drawing with you. And I hope you keep drawing because uh, you'll only get better at it and it'll only get more fun. Um, all right. Thanks so much. Bye.